Let's talk about the probably single most important reason why I use Vim. Vim is in the terminal. When I first started to learn Vim, I tried out Mac Vim. So I'm on a Mac and Mac Vim is like Vim plus a GUI. The problem is that Mac Vim works the other way around. It has a terminal within a text editor. But Vim, on the other hand, is a text editor inside a terminal. This makes all the difference. This means that when you're working with Vim, your, termin your terminal possibilities are completely endless. Anything you can do in a terminal, you can make playing nicely with Vim. But in Mac Vim, it's not as easy because, again, it's a GUI application that has access to the terminal. But if you would need, for example, two tabs running at the same time, well, it's not as trivial, and then you would probably end up using a terminal anyway. And that sort of defeats the purpose as far as I'm concerned, because then you're using a terminal and a terminal in Vim. So again, when learning Vim, I tried to use Mac Vim, and I, I believe I used Mac Vim for a, for a while, but quickly I got turned over to the dark side and simply had to use Vim in a terminal rather than Vim within a GUI application. Or rather, should I say, uh, Vim motion commands within a GUI application. So in that sense, you've perhaps also seen that applications such as Sublime, for example, have uh, classic mode that you can enable. And classic mode essentially gives you uh, Vim-like motion commands so you can move around in your text using commands that are similar to you if you're from, the, uh, from a Vim background. But again, to me that sort of defeats the purpose because that's not necessarily the best benefit of using Vim or, or rather, let me put it this way, the motion commands are amazing, right? We'll talk about that in another video. They are amazing, but they're not all uh, there is to Vim. So let me exemplify why being within a terminal makes such a huge difference or why it's so valuable. Think of it this way. When you are in a text editor or when you are in an IDE and you find some new tool that you want to work with, say Cucumber or RSpec or whatnot, you know, for some reason you need to run some commands or you need to automate something, then you need to make the thing that you want to interact with, you need to make that thing interact nicely, play nicely with your text editor. So sometimes that requires a plugin, sometimes you can hack something up yourself, and sometimes there is not even a, a, a possibility of, of doing that because there is no sort of built-in way into the text editor or IDE to perform that, to, to, to make a connection to some other third-party thing. But with Vim, it's like there is always a way because you're in a terminal, so it's more like it's a matter of willpower. I mean, it's gonna work. <laughs> and, and most of the time, it's actually easy. It's as easy as saying, that you just execute a command. So I mean, if it's RSpec, you just execute RSpec, no worries. And because you're in the terminal, you can also use the current file and send the current file to RSpec. So in Vim, for example, there's the percentage sign that refers to the path of the current file. So if you would say RSpec and then percentage sign, then you would send the current file to, R to the RSpec command. So think of it this way instead. The next time you're suffering some interoperability issues, the next time you are trying to interact with some third-party something and then you realize it's not possible but you figure it could probably be automated and it frustrates you that it can't be automated but you also feel that it's kind of a trivial thing to be frustrated over and it's kind of like bike shedding so it's not something that we should be uh, concerned about fixing then Vim is probably not for you. But if you feel that that's super frustrating, and of course that should be automated, then definitely check out Vim. Vim is definitely for you. So this was the second reason in the series of why you should be using Vim. If you want more reasons, be sure to subscribe because there's more coming to that playlist. And also, this channel has tons of more stuff on programming, on object-oriented programming, on design principles, on design patterns, on software architecture. And in this channel, I try to source the minds of the greats. I try to learn from the people who were smarter and were before me. So if you want to learn more about these topics, be sure to subscribe.